Hello again, it's Joe V from 4x5 Photography. This is a new series of videos where we're going to talk about the view camera and all of its movements, uh, and what those movements do, and how you manipulate those movements to be able to capture the plane of sharp focus that you're interested in capturing. Uh, as we go through this, we'll be talking about the differences between a view camera and a DSLR or a fixed plane camera and uh, hopefully as a result of that you'll find uh, an interesting reason for your creative photography uh, to acquire and use a view camera. So I hope you'll stay with me. Let's jump right in. Okay, let's start our review here with considering first the SLR, the single lens reflex camera. So here I've got a 4.3 SLR, a small SLR, but uh, quite frankly it doesn't matter whether you're using a camera like this uh, full frame or crop sensor DSLR or, or even a uh, film SLR for that matter this type of camera has a fixed focal plane and what that means is that the three focal planes we care about the, the plane in which the sensor or the film sits the plane of focus at, uh, generated at the, by the lens and then the plane of the image that you want in this case uh, I'm using an example here of a white breadboard those three planes are always perfectly parallel with each other. So you can't deviate from that. You can buy things like tilt-shift lenses, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. But the fact is that a DSLR varies the film plane, or the plane of sharp focus, really by focusing the camera, which allows the image to focus in at a certain difference, and then by adjusting the depth of field, which makes this plane here of sharp focus wider to the point where it could be as wide as infinity uh, with a large aperture. So a fixed plane camera, is a, uh, that, that whole uh, mechanism by which the sensor or film, the lens, and then the plane of sharp focus uh, operate in parallel is, uh, is important because that's how this camera functions and quite frankly that's the biggest difference between a uh, SLR, digital or film and a view camera. Let's talk about why. So here I've got a studio view camera and I'm using a studio view camera because it's the camera that I have uh, that's comprised of the most number of movements that you can have in a view camera. Uh, actually this has all of the possible movements save one and we'll talk a little bit about that. But again let's look at the configuration of the camera. So here we've got the uh, film plane, so back here is where we would put our film back. Uh, the, the film plane would be here. Here is our lens plane, and then of course in this configuration, just like the digital camera, this would be our plane of sharp focus. And by varying the aperture here, uh, this will be, uh, the, the, the size of this will be determined based on uh, what you're setting. So. Uh, in this configuration, again, exactly the same as a digital SLR. What varies, though, with the view camera is in its movements, and let's talk a little bit about that. So with this camera, again, this is a studio view camera, and what I'm going to show you here applies to all view cameras, although all view cameras uh, don't necessarily have all of these movements. You have to decide which movements are important to you and uh, which ones you would want to have in a camera. And so hopefully this series of videos will help you decide that. But uh, let's first look at this camera. So it's basically got two standards. We've got the film plane or the back standard and we've got the focal plane here, the lens plane, which is the front standard. So in a view camera there are the potential for five movements of this uh, front uh, standard. And that first movement is what's called rise and fall where you can take the lens plane and raise it or you can lower it rise and fall that's the most simplest of all of the movements that uh, you can make on the front standard of a view camera and that's really a composition movement again we'll get to that a little later the second movement that you can have is tilt and tilt is basically the ability to get the, to change the front standard to have it tilt forward or backward. So backward or forward. That's the second movement. The third movement is shift. I can take this front standard and I can shift it to the left or to the right. And then depending on the camera, I have uh, some uh, 
you know, amount of movement that I can get. Again, all the cameras determine this. And then lastly, what I can do is I can rise, fall, shift, and I can also swing. And so those are my five movements, rise, fall, tilt, swing, and shift. Now with a view camera, depending on the camera again, you can do, you can make those same movements with the back standard. Now this camera allows you to do all of those movements with the exception of shift left and right. So it has the ability to rise, fall, it has the ability to shift backwards and forward, and in this example, it has the ability to swing to the left and to the right. So those are your five basic movements. Again, what this camera is missing is the ability to shift, uh, which is a composition changing element uh, that we'll talk about. But in the end, those are the five important movements. And all cameras are different in terms of which ones you use.